Welcome to At Home with Music. I'm Leon Olguin. As I look back over my career as a musician, I realize that I have been blessed. I had many wonderful teachers along the way. I can go all the way back to 1969 when I first started taking piano lessons. And it just so happened that we lived next door to a young woman who was teaching piano lessons to the neighborhood children. And if she's watching this video, I'm going to embarrass her. Her name was Eleanor Giacoletti. In fact, her name still is Eleanor Giacoletti. She is still with us, thankfully. In fact, she doesn't live too far from me, and I really need to go out and visit her just to remind her how grateful I was and how grateful I am for the good start that she gave me in my music education. She was very sweet, very patient, she allowed me to progress as fast as I wanted to. And when I began to express a desire to improvise and to write my own music, she never discouraged me. In fact, she sent me to another teacher, a fellow by the name of Eugene Hemmer. Now, unfortunately, I've lost contact with him, so I don't know if he is with us at this point or where he might be. But I took some lessons from him for composition I also studied with another teacher named James Lynch. Once again, I've lost contact with him, but his purpose was to help me develop my technique. But at the same time, I continued to study with Mrs. Giacoletti. Then when I went to college, I studied with a young teacher named Rosemary Heiler. She also helped me a lot, helped me to develop my technique and expand my repertoire. But there was one teacher I had in college, and he didn't teach me piano. He taught me music theory, and his name was George Heusenstam, and he's the teacher that I have so many fond memories of. Mr. Heusenstam taught with a great deal of enthusiasm and just really wanted to see you succeed. And so he took me through, I believe, two quarters. We had the quarter system when I was in college. We had three quarters a year and then one quarter off. So each quarter was like uh, 10 weeks, 12 weeks long. I took music theory with him, basic theory and advanced theory. I also studied counterpoint with Mr. Heusenstam. And sadly, I just learned that yesterday at the age of 97, Mr. George Heusenstam, teacher, musician, composer extraordinaire, passed away. And it just made me think about how much I learned from him and how inspired I was by him to continue with my career in music. He used to correct my papers that I would turn in, and he always wrote in red ink what I could do and what notes I could change. Sometimes he would even write out these long examples of counterpoint in red ink. <laughs> no chance for correction there. He would write these things out for me and then say, now look, you could have done it this way. Wouldn't this be great? And I, all I could do was look at it and say, yep, that's how I should have done it. That's how I'm going to do it in the future. But he was so enthusiastic about his teaching. And sometimes he would make off-the-cuff remarks that just had us rolling in the aisles laughing. I remember one time, and I have no idea why he said this, but he said, you know, he was talking about wind instruments for some reason, and he talked about flutes and how flutes had blowholes. And it suddenly occurred to him that he said, whales would love a flute. And why? Because they both have blowholes. My friend Charlie and I, and you met Charlie in a previous video when he talked about the care of your piano. He's a piano technician and piano tuner as well as a fine musician in his own right. Anyway, Charlie and I, we, we thought that was so great that this is what Charlie made for me. <laughs> I think I showed this in the video, and much to Charlie's surprise, I still have this mug to this day. I don't use it. I don't drink from it. I just simply keep it where I can see it. I'm always afraid that if I put it in the dishwasher, these, these letters might come off. But nevertheless, whales would love a flute. That, that's, that's a quote that we remember from George Heusenstam. I imagine that if you can look back, if you've been a student, if you've been to college, if you went to high school, maybe you have a favorite teacher that you remember. Now, I could name several other teachers that I've had. I remember a teacher I had in high school. Her name was Mrs. Shuck. And Mrs. Shuck 
by the time I got to high school, had been there for so long that my dad remembers her from when he was in high school in the late 40s. She was, once again, a teacher who was very encouraging, always wanted her students to succeed. And once again, she allowed me to work far ahead in my class. I, they used to call it harmony. The class was called harmony in those days, not music theory. And I wanted to learn everything I could because it just fascinated me. So I just got to do whatever I wanted to in harmony class. And she also taught me a lot about accompanying choirs, how to do that and accompanying singers. Nevertheless, getting back to Mr. Hoysenstam, I just wish all the best for his family, for his friends. I know they're going to miss him dearly. And believe it or not, we used to think, we, I thought about him many times over the years because I still use and I now teach many of the things that he taught me when I studied music theory with him. And I haven't even gotten into counterpoint yet. We may end up studying that here on At Home with Music at some point, but we've still got a lot to do as far as music theory is concerned. Mr. George Hoysenstam, born in, I believe, 1926 and just recently passed away on April 8th, 2024 at the age of 97. Now, what I would like to do is play for you one of the compositions that he left with me. He gave this to me back right around 1980 when I was getting ready to graduate. My final exam was to write a piece of uh, Baroque-style music. And, well, he gave me an A+. <laughs> and then he said, you've got the goods. Keep me up to date on the progress of your career. And sadly, I, I was not altogether great at doing that, although I did contact him a few years ago, and he remembered me as his student from 1978 until 1980 when I graduated from college. Anyway, I'd like to play you a little piano piece that he wrote in 1979, and it's called Nocturne. 